Multiple sclerosis, or MS for short, is a chronic and progressive demyelinating disease of the central nervous system. Myelin is the protective sheath that surrounds the axons of neurons, allowing them to quickly send electrical impulses. In MS, demyelination happens when the immune system inappropriately attacks and destroys the myelin. As a result, communication between neurons breaks down, ultimately leading to various sensory, motor, and cognitive problems. Although there's no cure for MS, disease-modifying therapy can be used to help slow the disease progression, as well as mitigate some of the symptoms, and ultimately improve the client's quality of life. Now, disease-modifying therapy for MS includes monoclonal antibodies and immunomodulators. The most commonly used monoclonal antibodies for MS include rituximab, natalizumab, ocrelizumab, and alemtuzumab, which are administered intravenously. On the other hand, immunomodulators for MS include dimethylfumarate, teraflunamide, and fingolimod, which are administered orally, as well as glatiramer and recombinant human interferon beta-1a and interferon beta-1b, which can be injected intramuscularly or subcutaneously. Once administered, these medications blunt the inflammatory process, which ultimately helps reduce the severity and frequency of relapses or exacerbation of multiple sclerosis. Unfortunately, these medications can cause side effects like bone marrow suppression, which can result in anemia, thrombocytopenia, leukopenia, and an increased risk for infections. In fact, for alemtuzumab, that's a boxed warning, with an increased risk of developing fatal infections, autoimmune effects, and malignancy. Clients on disease-modifying therapy may also experience drowsiness, fatigue, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. These medications may also result in hypersensitivity reactions, such as injection site reactions, Stevens-Johnson syndrome, toxic epidermal necrolysis, and anaphylaxis, while alemtuzumab and rituximab have a boxed warning for potentially causing fatal infusion reactions after administration, and rituximab may also cause fatal mucocutaneous reactions. In addition, these medications can also lead to cardiotoxicity, as well as hepatotoxicity, and that's a boxed warning for teraflunamide. On the other hand, natalizumab and rituximab have a boxed warning for increasing the risk of developing progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, or PML for short. Clients at greater risk include those who present with anti-JC virus antibodies, as well as those on therapy for a prolonged period of time and those with prior use of immunosuppressants. Finally, rituximab also has a boxed warning for the reactivation of hepatitis B virus, or HBV. As far as contraindications go, the monoclonal antibodies natalizumab and rituximab are obtained using both human and murine genes, so they're contraindicated in clients with hypersensitivity to murine proteins. In addition, natalizumab and rituximab have a boxed warning against its use in clients with any symptoms that may suggest progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, while rituximab is also contraindicated in clients with an active HBV infection or those who develop reactivation of HBV. On the other hand, teraflunamide has a boxed warning against its use during pregnancy, while the rest of these medications should be used with extreme caution. Additional precautions include breastfeeding, immunosuppression, and clients with cardiovascular, hepatic, or renal disease. Now, if a client with MS is prescribed natalizumab, start by assessing your client's current symptoms like fatigue, problems with balance, visual impairment, and urinary urgency. Then, assess their weight and vital signs, and check their most recent laboratory test results, including CBC, and their renal and liver function tests. Next, explain to your client that the medication will help treat their MS symptoms and that it will be administered intravenously every four weeks. Let them know about some of the medication side effects that should be reported to their healthcare provider right away, such as hepatotoxicity, which could present with abdominal pain, anorexia, dark urine, or yellowing of the skin or eyes, as well as PML, which can cause confusion, memory impairment, depression, behavioral changes, or one-sided weakness. Advise them that they will need periodic MRIs to monitor their MS, and that testing of their cerebrospinal fluid can be done to check for the JC virus that causes PML. 
Lastly, let them know that while receiving this medication, they will need follow-up visits at regular intervals and provide them with a schedule of their appointments. Okay, now keep in mind that the medication should be stored in the refrigerator. Before administering the medication, remove it from the refrigerator and allow it to warm to room temperature. Ensure there is a peripheral IV line in place and confirm that emergency equipment and medications are readily available. During the infusion and for one hour after the infusion concludes, monitor your client closely for a hypersensitivity reaction, which could present with chest tightness, wheezing, dyspnea, difficulty swallowing, or swelling of the lips, tongue, or face. If this occurs, stop the infusion immediately, notify the healthcare provider, and prepare to administer emergency medications such as oxygen, epinephrine, or corticosteroids as ordered. Next, review with your client some recommended lifestyle modifications to help them manage their MS symptoms. Also, discuss triggers that can cause their disease to worsen and talk about strategies they can use to manage them. Teach your client to include infection control practices into their daily routine, such as frequent hand hygiene and avoiding crowds and contact with people with known infections, as well as avoiding live attenuated vaccines, and prompt them to notify their healthcare provider if they develop symptoms of infection like fever, chills, sore throat, or pain with urination. Lastly, encourage your client to establish regular activity and rest patterns, stay well hydrated, minimize their consumption of caffeine, and follow a nutritious, well-balanced diet. Finally, when caring for a client with MS receiving natalizumab, be sure to closely monitor them for side effects and evaluate for the desired therapeutic response of decreased MS symptoms and improved quality of life. Alright, as a quick recap, disease-modifying therapy for multiple sclerosis includes monoclonal antibodies such as rituximab, natalizumab, ocrelizumab, and alemtuzumab, as well as immunomodulators, which include dimethyl fumarate, teraflunamide, and fingolimod, and glatirimer and recombinant human interferon beta-1a and interferon beta-1b. These medications have anti-inflammatory and immunoregulatory effects that help blunt the inflammatory process, which ultimately helps reduce the severity and frequency of relapses or exacerbation of multiple sclerosis. Side effects include hypersensitivity reactions, cardiotoxicity, hepatotoxicity, and PML. When caring for a client on disease-modifying therapy for multiple sclerosis, nursing considerations include performing a baseline assessment, close monitoring for side effects, and evaluating for the therapeutic responses. Client education is focused on what to expect during therapy, learning to recognize side effects that should be reported, and recommended lifestyle modifications to help them manage their symptoms. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.